Well, hello, uh, candidates. My name is David Brown, and I'm going to be your moderator for this evening. Uh, tonight is the first of two nights, the uh, event hosted by the West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce. Tonight, we're going to be speaking to the candidates uh, for Troutdale and continuing tomorrow night, beginning with the candidates of Wood Village and then wrapping up with Fairview uh, candidates. And I apologize to the audience for my back to them. But uh, our event today is going to be taped by Metro East Community Media, and you can pick up a playback schedule in the back, uh, in the back room, the back of the room, excuse me. Before we begin, I would like to explain the format uh, for tonight's event to the participants, and thank you very much for being here. We will begin with each candidate introducing themselves and the position they're running for. Each candidate will have two minutes to do so. After the introductions, we'll move on to the question and answer portion of our evening. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer uh, the question. Uh, they will get a warning, a yellow card, when there's uh, a minute and a half into the uh, answer. And they'll uh, also see a red card come up at the end of the two minutes. Um, we ask that you kind of wrap it up when you see that red card. If you ramble on, I will give you a verbal warning. Upon the second verbal warning, uh, you will not be permitted to answer the following question uh, that we ask. Uh, there will be a timer, and I explained about the yellow card and the red card. The first group of questions have been predetermined before this evening, and you have them in, in front of you. We also have encouraged the audience members to write questions on the note cards in the back of the room, and we've already received a couple, and if we have time, we will ask those as well. Please, no personal attacks. Uh, we will uh, have to deal with that in our own appropriate way. There will be no uh, time giving to rebuttals during the question time. However, upon the next question, if you would like to spend some of your two minutes to rebuttal the first uh, previous question, you may do so. We're going to uh, ask the questions starting from left to right, beginning with Mr. Hudson, and then we will alternate that through the questions of the evening. Once we have finished the questions and answer portion of the time, the candidates will have a two minute uh, to make their closing statements and then we'll close the evening. So Mr. Hudson, you're on the clock, two minutes, introduce yourself, and then also the position you're running for. All right, thank you, and thank you to the West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce for having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Zach Hudson, I'm running for the Troutdale, uh, um, sorry, I'm running for position six on the um, uh, Troutdale Chamber. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> You'd think as a speech and debate coach that I wouldn't get this flustered, but I'm used to having my kids up there, oh, uh, sorry, my students up there doing the, doing the flustering and me sitting back grimly taking notes, so I will reposition myself. Anyway, um, so anyway, I, I am running for Troutdale position six. Um, I am a teacher at Mount Hood Community College. I also teach at uh, ITT Technical Institute. And um, I have been there for three years. Before that, I was a high school teacher at uh, Corbett High School and at Gresham High School. Um, and that's where I, I coached speech and debate, uh, as well as coaching their, uh, their middle school wrestling team, uh, their middle school track team, and, and other things like that, um, and their leadership organization. Uh, I currently serve on the Troutdale Budget Committee and on the Troutdale Citizens Advisory Committee, and I've done that for two years, and so I've built up a lot of experience and familiarity with the city through that. Um, getting to know how the, how the city works and how the, the committee process works. Um, I also this year had a chance to participate with the Summerfest Organizing Committee, uh, along with being on the committee that made decisions about Summerfest. Uh, I was the entertainment coordinator and supervisor, and so I was uh, recruiting entertainment and then managing the stage. And that was a wonderful experience, and I got to see how something like Summerfest and community events like that are able to bring a community together. Um, I look forward to talking more about what I, uh, my vision for Troutdale, but that will be addressed in other questions. So I'll leave this at thank you, and I uh, look forward to um, sharing these ideas with you. 
Thank you, Mr. Dowst. Yes, good Dowst. evening. Good evening. My name's Doug Dowst, and I'm running for mayor of Troutdale. Uh, my opponent, Jim Kite, is not here tonight, um, so it's just me talking about being mayor. Um, I have been on the city council for 16 years, so I have been elected by the citizens four times in Troutdale. This fifth time, I'm running for mayor and looking for that support. I think the citizens of Troutdale want a mayor that they can trust, a mayor they respect, and a mayor that has leadership skills uh, that will come into play the next four years. And those people that have endorsed me know that I can bring that to the position of mayor. Um, I'm endorsed by the entire city council that's now sitting to be the next mayor, and also the surrounding mayors of Gresham, Wood Village, and Fairview. Numerous business owners, and a lot of other folks. I look forward to being the next mayor uh, come January and using my skills to turn things around and make Troutdale a very positive place and a city that people will be proud to live in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Slater. Good evening. Once again, thank you, West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce, for hosting this and the city of Fairview for this wonderful venue and thank you for the audience being here to listen to us and those on the television. Once again, my name is Tom Slider. I'm running for position six for Troutdale City Council. Uh, my experience is actually 30 plus years with the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. I retired as, well, I retired twice from the Sheriff's Office, the first time as a chief deputy and then I went into the private sector as a director of marketing for the American Jail Association. And then I worked for Continental Airlines and Frontier Airlines, both as an agent and a supervisor. And then I was called back into service at the Sheriff's Office at the request of Bob Skipper as his second in command as the under sheriff. And then uh, I left when Bob left. Um, I would be a fresh face on the city council I've got over 25 years manager and supervisor experience in government. I've learned to work with others, uh, both at the local, state, and federal level. And uh, I'm a consensus builder. Uh, once again, I'm a fresh face uh, to the city, uh, but I come with a wealth of experience and knowledge. Uh, being retired, I will be a full-time commissioner, or excuse me, counselor, and uh, I'm willing and able and have the energy and ability to uh, serve the citizens of, of uh, Troutdale and be a good steward of uh, tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilson? Thank you. Uh, my name is John Wilson. Uh, we relocated from Oklahoma to Troutdale in uh, 1991. And immediately I pretty much got involved with the city at, at the school level with my kids and Paul Tolliver pulled me into the city. I served eight years on the budget committee. Uh, I served on the ad hoc committee for the redevelopment of the old sewer treatment plant and also uh, was on the uh, chair, vice chair of the advise, Riverfront Advisory Committee for the sewer treatment plant uh, urban development. Uh, I've also uh, worked with the city community events uh, 12 years as a member in, uh, and committee chair for Troutdale Summerfest. Um, and it's a, a great program. Uh, recently, I worked on the uh, Troutdale uh, Cruise Inn. Uh, I've been a supporter of the city. I've been down at City Hall on a regular basis to learn more about the City Hall so I can make a decision whether or not I wanted to run for this position. And you know, from that, I've learned a lot of information from the current city councilman. And I have their support uh, and endorsements from either support or endorsements from all the city councilors currently. Uh, I look forward to working with the, the city in a more formal position, and I'm running for position six, Troutdale City Council. Thank you. Thank you for those introductions. We'll go ahead and start with the first question. Uh, Mr. Dallas will start uh, the group off. The question is, what do you consider the most important challenge facing Troutdale today, and how will you address this challenge? 
Okay, I'm gonna key in on the word challenge and not talk about vision or anything like that right now, but I, I see a few challenges the city does need to address. One is what I call a, uh, a rebranding. Uh, there are certain um, scenarios, certain reputations the city has in our, our building codes and our permitting process that has come to light recently. So one of the challenges we're gonna have is to look at our permitting process and the codes that we have for everybody that comes into City Hall that wants to uh, redevelop or add on to their property or remodel their property to make sure we're treating everybody fairly and justly um, because that is an issue that uh, we need to deal with here pretty soon to make sure that people know that when they come to Troutdale and they want to develop uh, that we will be fair and just. And another rebranding thing we need to uh, work on is our tourism and economic development brand. We have some, I would call, a pretty big uh, opportunity in Troutdale to rebrand ourselves as kind of the, uh, the jumping off spot for a lot of activities. Not just the bicycle crowd that comes through, but there's some uh, fishing, hunting, uh, exploration activities where people could jump off from Troutdale. And so that's another rebranding. I, I put it under the category of challenge because branding is always a challenge to do. And it may take a few years to develop that within Troutdale. Uh, getting the citizens more involved through town halls is another challenge. Uh, the citizens are involved to a certain degree, but they could be much more involved. And I think that would help turn things around to make it more positive for citizens. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. Uh, one of the uh, directives that we're requesting is that you do not take notes during uh, somebody else's uh, conversation. I appreciate that. I'm sorry that I did not say that. So please go ahead and put your pens back into your uh, pockets. <laughs> you did it fine. No uh, notes? No notes. Uh, we're testing your memory to see that's a, what we're trying to do. Same question to you, Mr. Slager. Thank you. Uh, I'm not challenging anything that uh, Doug said. Uh, I think the most important thing we have going in Troutdale right now is urban development. We've got some areas that uh, uh, need to be developed. We need to make sure that we have the infrastructure in place so that we can get people and businesses to come to our city and develop those areas that are sorely in, in need of development, uh, particularly in the downtown area. Once we get the downtown area kind of squared away and, and running as it should be and, and get some of those blighted areas gone, I think that will help with our economic development in the downtown area. The other thing that has been on my mind and part of the reason that I ran uh, was the, the conflict between the mayor and the councilors right now. I'm a consensus builder. I feel that I would have some impact there. Um, we, we've got some strong councilors, and I think they do a fantastic job. Um, we've, it, it's no secret that there's some problems with the mayor, uh, the current mayor, and uh, once that is squared away, I think the councilors will be back on track. We've just got to make sure that uh, the councilors are doing their job as the charter sets up. Uh, I think that's another challenge that uh, they can't micromanage the city departments or the city manager. Uh, they set policy, they set the budget, and then they uh, relay that to the city manager who, who takes action through his department head. So I think we just have to get back on track uh, uh, with that situation. Those are the two big issues in, in my mind. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Wilson? Yes, thank you. Um, one of the things that uh, we travel on every day is our roads and coming within the next 12 months we're going to have to start addressing the issue of our road deterioration and the City Council is going to have to work on that and figure out a way to, to make that happen with our, our current revenue system. Uh, it, it is a big challenge to trying to keep up with our roads and the roads are needing more repair than we have uh, current funding for. So that would be uh, a, a top priority for me. Uh, the economic development in, in Troutdale, 
Uh, we need to spur that so we can find new revenues for the city. Uh, we're currently working with the Cascade River District and the East Metro Economic Alliance to, to help us do that. And we need to continue to be in front of them uh, to make Troutdale stay on the top of their mind. And the, probably the last thing that uh, we need to work on and is, is our image. Our image within the region. I work out of uh, Clackamas, uh, Oregon City, and some of our reputation has gone down there. So as Doug was saying, the, the branding, uh, we need to rebrand our image. Mr. Hudson. Uh, we do certainly have some challenges in front of us. Uh, having served on the budget committee for two years, I've uh, watched as we've made very tough decisions about um, what we can pay for and what we should pay for. So a big challenge is to move forward in the current economic climate as it slowly turns itself around and make sure that we keep the city running and running well. So we need to pay close attention to our budget to make sure that we fund the vital city services that, that we need to. Um, we need to be very careful uh, when we start cutting things. And at the same time, of course, we need to pay close attention to how much we're spending. Uh, the other reason, uh, the, the other big challenge is, of course, economic development, as everyone has said so far. Uh, but it's not just a matter of bringing in new tax revenue. When you walk through downtown, you see empty windows and um, shuttered buildings and one giant hole in the ground with a chain link fence. And that's more than just a revenue problem, that's a city image problem. And if we're going to rebrand our city, which I think is an absolutely necessary thing that we do, as both, a, both in terms of reputation and in terms of tourism and our place in the gorge, uh, it's vital that we renew the downtown's um, you know, physical, visual image as well. And I think once we do so, it can start a cascade that will build and build and build, but it's going to take some effort to turn that around. Very good. Thank you. The second question, Mr. Slider, you're going to be starting with this one. And the question is, what resources will Troutdale need to meet the challenges you just outlined a moment ago? Where are you going to find them? And please include in your answer how you see the West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce playing or being a partner with you in these challenges. Well, there's a couple of different ways. Number one, if we get our development going, that will ag actually raise the taxes, some of the taxes that we need. But we need to really work with some private developers to help us develop those areas. If we take uh, the Chicago plan, the way that they're doing their infrastructure back there in Chicago through private partnership in, in building some of their infrastructure so that, that we have some shovel-ready uh, sites to develop. Number one, that'll bring up our taxes. Number two, uh, if we get more people coming in and, and uh, uh, patronizing our businesses, uh, that's going to help our tax base there. But I think the real secret is that we need to have some private investment to help us along, at least through the economic crisis. Uh, once we get that going, we get the taxes increased, uh, but more revenue coming in with the, the building and, and more people coming in. I think that how we do that with the, the chamber is, number one, they need to help us toot our own horn. Troutdale is a fantastic place. We've got some really, really great venues. Uh, if they help us uh, toot our own horn and get some more people coming out here and visiting, I think that's going to help us a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilson? Well, uh, one thing I think is important here is that uh, Troutdale is not just downtown. Uh, there's many sections to Troutdale that need to be addressed, and that's where the economic development needs to spread out through the whole city not just focus on one area. Uh, back in 2006, uh, I sat on the uh, Urban Renewal Redevelopment Committee. Uh, I've been involved in it for the last six years, and with the City Council and the City's work that they put into it, uh, that's, that looks like it's getting closer and closer to happening. So uh, we need to look at, um, really, uh, grants and other, you know, private investment to make uh, Troutdale work. Uh, we need the West Columbia Gorge uh, to promote the tourism in Troutdale, uh, to give a, a, a greater focus maybe on, on Troutdale, since that's where their headquarters is at. Uh, 
We need them to uh, help promote uh, the events that they continue to do in, in Troutdale because that helps bring people in. They need to look for resources probably that are, are free to, to help them promote uh, throughout the, the region, the state, and other states because there are certain things they can uh, latch on to that would be of no charge or minimal investment. And I realize that they're in the same situation that a lot of cities are in. They're underfunded. Uh, we also need, they also need to support the downtown merchants uh, from every city that they represent. Uh, Troutdale is a great place. Uh, it's a gateway to the gorge. Uh, tourism is on top of mind of all the merchants down there. So really the West Columbia Gorge really needs to focus on bringing people into our region. Thank you. Mr. Hudson. <coughs> So, um, in addition to monetary resources, I think one of the, the biggest uh, assets that we have to draw upon and things that we need to capitalize on is cooperation with surrounding communities. Uh, the West Columbia Cham Gorge Chamber of Commerce being a multi-city organization is, is certainly a part of that. So we need to be reaching out to other cities to coordinate our efforts and also other governing bodies including um, Metro and the county and the state and other things to make sure that our efforts are focused and coordinated and that we can help each other. Um, the chamber has a, a vital role in all of this because they're, they're the voice of the business community and I think it's important that as members of um, the city council we would listen to the board as much as we expect them to listen to us. Uh, the board is not there to, um, it, 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 they're not there to do stuff for us. They're there for us to work together so that we can help each other. Uh, business is helping the city and the city helping businesses. And so I think that kind of collaborative model is, is vital. Um, and so in addition to monetary, monetary resources, um, our human capital and our partnerships are resources that we will draw on to turn things around. Thank you. Mr. Dallas? Well, when it comes to resources that we need, uh, I put a well-functioning city council on the top of the list. I would hope that um, in the next four years the city council would uh, take on the, the role that I uh, personally would like us to do and that to be a team player in the whole East Metro region. Um, I'm very much a team player. I'm very much uh, wanting our council to be involved with our surrounding cities and the county and East Metro Economic Alliance, the Columbia Gorge Consortium. I think one of the things we did uh, during the budget committee meetings was we unfunded the uh, Columbia Gorge Economic Development Consortium, which looking back on that, I don't know that that was the smartest thing for us to do. Because one of the resources that we do need is an economic development director. Currently, we don't have one. And so companies coming in, developers coming in wanting to work with us, have no single person to really go to. Um, and I, I, I regret that we did that back in the budget committee days and part of what I would do as a resource we definitely need is to bring that back on board so that we have an economic development director. Um, there's, uh, when they come into the city, uh, they either go to the city manager now or, or they start talking to the council. I think the council needs to get out of the way and let an economic development professional uh, be the resource that we need for the city. Thanks. Okay. The next question, um, Mr. Wilson, you'll be beginning to answer this question. With the possibility of many development, uh, different development projects beginning in the coming years, including the development of the urban renewal area, how do you propose that we maintain our commitment to the environmental and the quality of life issues that have made Trato such a wonderful place to live? Well, I, I believe that uh, there was a big fight for a few years over Title 13, Troutdale versus Metro, and whether or not our environmental uh, codes uh, are, are strong enough. I, I do believe that 
our current environmental codes are strong enough and they will make sure that the future development of any area around Troutdale uh, will make sure that it protects the environment around it. Uh, I also believe that uh, with the new commerce coming in, the quality of life will only improve because we'll have uh, more funding to take care of uh, the increase as the population increases, the police and fire needs. Uh, if our building goes up, then we'll be able, to, uh, because of the new commerce and the new buildings, we'll be able to uh, hire on more staff to, to take care of that. So my belief is, is that uh, the current environmental codes, the Troutdale, are, are very strong and are in place. If there's any updates that need to be made, they have a very qualified staff uh, at the city that will make sure that the city council and the developers stay in line with those uh, needs. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Uh, I think it's important to remember that environmental quality and quality of life do not run counter to development. In fact, they are a key part of development. Um, as we develop our city, we contribute to the quality of life. Uh, and at the same time, um, our environmental concerns are uh, not something to be fought against. They're something to incorporate into the development so that we end up with uh, development that's not just efficient, but livable and pleasant. So I don't think we should see uh, economic development in the environment as clashing. Um, since uh, Title 13 and Metro were mentioned, I think it's important to say that one of the things that prospective developers are looking for is consistency. Um, and I think one of the things that Trout Deal needs to keep in mind if ever it wishes to question uh, the, the rules that uh, governing certain environmental things is if we push back against things, then we also run the risk of sending the message that Troutdale doesn't exactly know what the rules are, and if we develop there, what if it changes one month versus another month? So it's very important to keep that communication open and keep that, um, uh, that sense of working together with Metro and other regional bodies so that we don't scare off prospective investors. Um, a third thing that's very important to remember with, um, with environmental uh, issues and quality of life is keeping flexibility in mind and not being so rigid as to I insist on one scenario when another might work just as well. Here's an example. If a uh, developer were planning to move into the area north of the, the freeway and um, had a holdup because of uh, wetlands concern uh, and was able to offer something, for instance, like, okay, we, what if we drain this one lake, but tell you what, we'll give you a better lake. We need to be flexible enough to work with that. Mr. Dennis. Well, tr having Troutdale be a wonderful place to live is high on my list. Uh, that small town feel is very important to maintain. Um, and I think most people that live in Troutdale want to maintain that. I do have uh, 38 years working with a natural resource agency, and so I do have a lot of background in environmental issues uh, of, of every kind. I agree with Zach that a good combination of environmental concern and development is easily had. Uh, you can work it out with uh, developers to make sure we take care of the environment. One of the examples of this might be the Troutdale Energy Center that's being proposed for Troutdale, a natural gas-fired power plant. Uh, that has the potential of having uh, huge environmental concerns, uh, especially since we're in the backyard of Portland. And so that is one project that the council is gonna have to be particularly sensitive about and not necessarily, I think we all agree it's a good project. And I think we all agree that we want or would like it in Troutdale, but we also have to be very sensitive about the environmental concerns that the public will have about air quality issues in the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area and other uh, air pollution concerns that the Troutdale Energy Center may pose. And so I would challenge the council to pay close attention to both sides on that issue. Thank you. Mr. Slater. 
I think the real challenge is that we don't prostitute ourselves when it comes to environmental issues. We need to follow the guidelines that we have set up rather than saying, okay, we're going to change that because we've got a good developer coming in, we'll, we'll forget about this. I think we just need to stay steadfast, but as Zach said, yes, we have to be flexible at the same time. So that's the challenge for the council is to maintain the quality that we already have in place. We need to work with our regional agencies, whether it's DEQ, Metro, Multnomah County, State of Oregon, uh, Federal. We need to encompass all of that into our thinking and our beliefs. We can maintain the quality that we have. I think we have a fantastic quality in Troutdale. It's a great place to live. We're very, very conscious of the, the environment, and I think that we are taking steps to ensure that we maintain it. Again, if you get a strong developer coming in, he can't strong arm you to change your position on the environment. So we need to stay strong. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Hudson, this uh, mm -hmm. new question is gonna be starting with you, and also just to remind the audience, at any time, if you would like to write a specific question down to be addressed to the four candidates, the cards are in the back of the room. Just go ahead and fill it out and bring it up to the table here. We all know that one of the current as well as the future challenges of any city is economic development, and I know many of you have already uh, mentioned that. But here's the specific question we have for you. What do you need to do to attract new businesses to Troutdale? First, we need to actively look for new businesses. We need to recruit and uh, cultivate new businesses. And that's why it's crucial that we rejoin the West Columbia Gorge Consortium so that we have someone who's doing that with focus. Right now, um, people, uh, the businesses are looking, are sending out calls for proposals, and we have no one to answer them. So that's very important. Second is that we um, enforce the codes we have and if necessary create new codes to clean up blighted and derelict property. Um, we have the, the, the block downtown uh, which we would spoken of before right now is in clear violation of city code but we haven't done anything about it. It would be expensive, it would be a hassle but it's something that we need to focus on um, so that property owners take care of their property in order to change the entire climate of, uh, of physical real estate um, and business in Troutdale. Uh, thirdly, we need to actively market ourselves, as has already been mentioned, and the West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce is uh, a key um, partner in this. Uh, we need to be, as um, Mr. Doust has said, rebranding ourselves as a tourist destination. Um, we can look for niche markets, such as um, cycling has been mentioned, hunting has been mentioned, but we have many other uh, aspects of our little city, uh, the railroads, for instance, um, that could be turned into a, a niche marketing opportunity. Um, so the, that, that's what I would say. Um, enforce city codes and actively solicit business and market ourselves actively. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Um, as part of the Economic Development Subcommittee with uh, Councillor Thomas and Councillor White, we did try and spark uh, new businesses coming in or at least filling up the empty storefronts. And so we did try uh, the uh, not having businesses have to pay fees if they wanted to come into an empty storefront. So that was one positive thing we've already tried. And I would say that that was a success. Uh, we've had numerous businesses that have at least uh, come in or remodeled or expanded uh, when they may not have done so if we didn't have that program. So we still need to uh, determine whether to continue that or not. But I think, you know, we've kind of touched on this subject with a lot of different things, but probably another thing that would spark some new business coming in would be to look at our urban renewal area concept plan and make sure that that definitely happens. I mean, once we get these foundational developments getting rolling and movement starts to occur in the city, especially the urban renewal area, not to exclude uh, the downtown area, 
I mean, I think if you pressured me, I'd say the Merino block is pretty high on my list <laughs> to get things rolling uh, there. But once we do get those two, the downtown area and the urban renewal area rolling, I think that in itself uh, would bring in new businesses because they would, they would see that things are happening in the commercial arena, not just the industrial arena like we have had recently. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Schleider. My basis, of course, is public safety. I don't think you can have any economic development without a safe city. Now, most people think I mean police and fire, but it goes deeper than that. You have to have safe streets. They can't be full of potholes. They can't be gravel. They have to be paved. We've got to work and make sure that our sewer system and, and water system are safe. If those aren't safe, people aren't going to come here, businesses or families. So we need to make sure that our public safety is number one and is the foundation for any uh, economic development. After that, then we have to, again, market ourselves. What does the city of Troutdale really want to be? What does the downtown area want to be? We need some input from citizens. What does the citizenry of Troutdale want the downtown area to look like? What do they want it to be? What do they want uh, the old sewer treatment plant to look like? Um, do they want to have a, a uh, Woodburn type uh, outlet mall? Uh, although I don't think there's enough room there for uh, one the size of Woodburn, but um, maybe it could be moved someplace else. Maybe we, we just need to, to, to start looking at everything and have an open mind and a fresh look at everything. Um, and, and then market it. Market ourselves, market what we want, what we want to look like get the citizens to get on board with us and help us develop what this city is going to look like today, tomorrow, and 10 years down the road. Thank you. Mr. Wilson? Thank you. Uh, as, as I look around uh, Troutdale and the things that I've done around Troutdale, uh, as far as the economic development, uh, we, we do need to look outside our current uh, two partners uh, to find somebody that will help market it. Uh, whether it's the West Columbia Gorge Consortium or an agency, another agency, or even if we had the ability to hire somebody just in the city that just deals with the economic development. But whatever we do, we need to make sure that that person, agency, fits our needs. Because uh, if, if not, we're just throwing money away and uh, I think that one of the reasons why we uh, uh, dropped the consortium was because of the lack of productivity or maybe the misunderstanding of what the city expected from, from the monies it was contributing. Um, and that, that will attract new business and like the urban renewal area, it, it's, it's, it's working its way through the system. I really see that uh, completing. Uh, the rest of downtown, the blighted area, the Marino block, we just need to find a way to entice and help that person uh, make sure that they make the repairs or, or fix it, sell it, and uh, let it get developed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dallas, uh, this new question will be starting with you. How do you propose to fund the replacement or repair of the condemned city hall? Ah, good question. The, uh, the old city hall was, so to speak, condemned uh, and we had to move city staff out of it because it's structurally unsound. So the price tag to fix it, if we were to keep the building and move back in, would be in the area of about one and a half million dollars. That's pretty steep uh, because there's foundational issues and roof issues. So what would I do? Um, I, on the top of my thought list is possibly uh, selling Old City Hall. First of all, I wouldn't do anything single-handedly. We'd have to get a big team of people together to decide this. In fact, we're starting the outreach for a citizen group to help us decide what to do at the Old City Hall. But what I was thinking was to sell the Old City Hall and uh, or, or move it into a, a grouped development of the Marino Block, the old City Hall, the old police station, 
kind of group them all together into a very, uh, very favorable, uh, what might be a good development for that whole south side of downtown. So then the new city hall then could be possibly a leased anchor tenant within the, the core of that development. So that would be a good thing for a developer coming into town. Uh, they would have an anchor tenant be in the new city hall and in which we would lease that space, maybe lease to own. So that way we'd have a new city hall and we'd have standards that the developer would use for the historic building, the old city hall, in ways that that should be developed. I think Mr. Doust uh, hit upon it there about the old city hall uh, in trying to remodel it, not only cost-wise, but there's no way you can make that building ADA uh, accessible. Number one, to go in and do the foundation, you're going to have to take down some add-on structures to be able to get to the foundation, those that were added after the, the initial building. So it's it just even once that's done and you make the building secure because of the slope and everything, there's no way you can make that ADA accessible. So I'm, I'm leaning towards a, a new building. And I think Mr. Doust hit upon it. It's got to be a private uh, investment, private government investment, shall we say. Uh, whether we can work with Metro, uh, the county, the state, the federal government, uh, again, going to the Chicago plan, the way they've done it back there on some of their infrastructure, it's not only got some of the things done that need to be done for the city, but it's also put people to work. And it's got them a paycheck coming in. Once again, you have that paycheck coming in, you've got some more taxes coming in. Uh, again, if we take a look at it and we get the citizen input, I think the citizen input is extremely important on what we're going to do with City Hall. We need to get all of our City Hall people in one building. Uh, we've got them spread out all over downtown right now. And some of those areas are not ADA accessible. And so we need to get on track. We need to get it done as quickly as possible. And hopefully the committee that's being established will help the council determine exactly what we're going to do. Once again, citizen import, input is imperative and important. Thank you. Mr. Wilson? Thank you. Um, once uh, the, the city hall got condemned and they, they moved the city offices throughout Troutdale, uh, I actually feel sorry for all of them because it's a very inefficient way for them to work. I know some of them have to go from one building to another to work. Uh, the ADA thing is, is that the city administrators have to come down to a building that, it, that the, uh, somebody that needs ADA assistance can get into. Uh, I had suggested uh, to the city councilors about putting together a, a citizens group and they have elected to do that and they're assembling uh, people to go on that today and, and the reason for that was because when they when they first tried to develop the urban renewal area uh, because there wasn't city citizen involvement uh, there was resistance and it didn't pass same thing happened with the police building so until uh, there was uh, citizen involvement, uh, these, these, the citizens of Troutdale wouldn't, wouldn't buy into it. Once you get the support of the citizens, then anything is possible. And that's the reason why the urban renewal area got developed in, and also the police department. Uh, there are many different ways of, of taking care of City Hall. Uh, you know, I've talked to the people with the, at the Historical Society who don't want to see that building torn down. Okay, and I've told them that they need to be involved, those citizens involved with this committee. Uh, because they got a whiteboard and can make the decision themselves. Uh, having an anchor, uh, being an anchor tenant, I think is a great idea with a lease option to buy, and that was uh, something that I've talked about with a few of the city councilors. And uh, not taking away from Doug, because I'm sure Doug probably had the idea before me. Um, but uh, we need to we need to look at the the different ways of, of doing this, and not just one set. Uh, solution and the only way you can do that is to have citizen buy-in thank you thank you mr hudson uh, i have to apologize to the audience if they were hoping to see fiery debate this evening i think we've spent most of the past uh discussion engaged in furious agreement with each other i will add to that i love the idea of um along with citizen um involvement and guidance uh looking to partner with a developer to overhaul a larger section of downtown than simply one building. I think this has the advantages of, first, it, 
fostering the public-private partnership, which really is the key to uh, making the economic development work, to bringing in a uh, developer who feels comfortable enough and, and safe enough with an anchor tenant that they're willing to put a lot of private investment money in, and then to let City Hall be not just something ancillary that gets done and sits on the side of town, but something that is uh, a focal point for the downtown that then brings in other types of business along with walking space, uh, along with um, just public space, uh, so that it creates the, the, the kind of downtown that we want. We have an amazing opportunity here to build a downtown um, almost from the ground up that we really can capitalize on if we think boldly. Thank you. Well, this next question, uh, Mr. Slider, you'll be starting out and it might heat up a little bit based on this question. The Grange Project in Wood Village has the potential to greatly change the small cities, what I call the tri-cities of Trout Hill, Wood Village, and Fairview. Um, some say for the better, some say for the worse. What is your position on Measure 82 and 83 and why? I love this question. Um, I'm, I'm kind of ambivalent. It doesn't really matter. Um, and, and it's going to be up to the citizens of, of Wood Village in the end. Uh, I'm going to go against the three governors that are opposing it. I think this is more of a local issue than it is a state issue at this point. My understanding of the measures is that it's just the one casino. If they were going to build more casinos later on, it has to go back through the same process. Uh, if it brings jobs to East County, uh, and in particular Troutdale, let's go for it. I think the old dog track right now is a blight that sits there and is, is deteriorating as we speak. If we can get a business in there and revamp that and get something going economically that benefits East County, I'm all for it. Unfortunately, they're adding a casino. I think they could have just done the, uh, the, the family fun center and, and, and had it that way. But as long as they're going to throw a casino in there, fine, let's go for it. Number one, I don't think it's going to increase the crime rate in Troutdale. Number two, I don't think it's going to take away from the video lotteries that are the backbone and, and the support of many, many small businesses in the area. Um, so again, if it's going to increase uh, uh, our revenue in this area, let's go for it. Thank you. Mr. Wilson? Thank you. Uh, I think we first have to look at our agreements with the Indian tribes that have casinos and that we would not be in competition with them, which I believe we already are with all the lottery pokers that are around the state, which the state is very much dependent upon for income right now. Um, I work down in the uh, Clackamas area, and I, it is just amazing how many of the video poker places there are. So I don't, I don't think there's any control for the state of, of, of holding back. I mean, if you go to Jansen Beach, they've got like their own casino road, road there. Um, the marketing for, for the Grange is, is, is very good this time. I, I really appreciate the efforts they put into it, but the bottom line, it's a casino. They won't develop the rest of it without the casino. Uh, they are saying that if they, 25% could equal about $100 million, and that means that they're making $400 million at the casino, so is that a fair amount to give back to the state? I think the state, once it, it starts getting into uh, getting $100 million a year, that it will want to open up more casinos in other areas because it will get more dependent upon that, that income. Uh, the state also has uh, control over the schools. I don't think that uh, the state is going to give all that $100 million back to the back to the schools. I think we'll still end up fighting the schools for the, for the money. It just They'll move that $5.3 million and, and that will stay there and the rest of it will go uh, to other needs of the state. And, the state will just find more uses for it. So my feeling is, is that uh, what had happened Lake Oswego. Okay. Mr. Hudson. <clears throat> um, I do admit some that, that I am torn on this issue because I, I certainly see 
both sides. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of people in, in Troutdale, and one thing that people have mentioned is it's not so much a matter of gambling, since really, if the question were gambling, you can play poker on your laptop. You can, you can, anyone with a credit card can play online poker. So it's not a question of access to gambling. It's a question of the character of the city and the surrounding areas. It's, it's a question of personality. And the, I, the, the overriding opinion that I heard is that it would, it would change things for the worse. Um, studies that I've read that, that look at things like crime and economic development um, for cities that have then taken on a casino uh, are kind of interesting in that they say there's little effect, both positive and negative, which is an interesting, um, an interesting fact there, at least from those particular studies. Um, so the real question is, would it create the personality for the city and the surrounding areas that we would want? Another important consideration, though, is we're voting for the entire state for um, 81 and 82, or sorry, 82 and 83. And though Wood Village does have a separate city measure that they have to either approve or disapprove, if we let 82 and 83 through, then I believe that really has opened the doors to casinos in the entire state. And even if Wood Village changes their mind, then the, the floodgates have opened and they can never be shut again. Um, I think we should proceed with a lot of caution, and I'll be voting no. Mr. Dennis. Well, in talking with Mayor Patricia Smith of Wood Village, she certainly is for the project, and I can understand why. Uh, it would bring a lot of uh, revenue and development into Wood Village, and I totally understand that. Um, I, too, have been walking door to door uh, in Troutdale, gotten this question, even though it's not a Troutdale question, from quite a few Troutdale residents. They are uh, concerned. I guess I could summarize it in the best words. They are more than concerned uh, about the uh, image that a casino in this area would bring. Uh, what I'm concerned about is the effects on our police department uh, with what I'm assuming would be increased calls and the transportation issues uh, with extra traffic uh, because this casino will be the closest one to Portland, uh, unlike the other tribal casinos, which are uh, a little bit of a distance away. Uh, this one, uh, I don't have any doubts, would be popular uh, being this close to Portland. So there would be traffic impacts to Troutdale, to Fairview, to Wood Village, to Gresham, and there would be some police department impacts that I'm very concerned about. Um, because I don't know that we have enough funds to hire more policemen. Uh, certainly Fairview may not, Gresham may not. You know, so there would be a strain on our resources. If it passes, what I would do is sit down with Wood Village to see how Troutdale could assist them in transportation and police support. Thank you. Mr. Wilson, this uh, question will start with you. It's actually a question from our audience. What are you going to do to improve relationships between the mayors of the four cities and the councils of the four cities? I'm assuming that's Troutdale, Wood Village, Fairview, and Gresham, not Portland, but Gresham. Well, I think that uh, we, we need a, a, a team, a city council and mayor that's a team, which is currently not there. And once we get that resolved, I think we can build with the other cities, build our relationships back with them. And, and work together to make things happen and instead of the I, it's me, it's a team, we're doing it together and I think that would resolve the issue. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I suppose the, the uh, response that I would have to the, the audience member who asked it is, good question, what do you think? Uh, it's important that we are willing to listen as city councilors and uh, I admit I had not considered the idea before, but there are many ideas I haven't considered. And so I would see my role on the city council as being someone who is approachable and who is ready to consider new ideas. Um, I'd love to hear ideas that would bring the 
uh, cities together, and if they sounded plausible, I'd certainly be willing to bring them before the city council as a voice, uh, to, to provide the voice uh, for my neighbors and, uh, and the members of Troutdale. Thank you. Mr. Downs. Well, this question is right up my alley because it's my expectation that the Troutdale Council would uh, act as a team player with all of East Metro. Um, and I think, I think uh, if I'm elected mayor, things will improve. I mean, uh, the, the mayors of Gresham, Wood Village, and Fairview are endorsing me because they know that things will improve uh, if they have a change in mayors in Troutdale. They have, a, they have an idea that things will get better. Um, and I would expect uh, the Troutdale City Council to uh, behave accordingly <laughs> and treat the other uh, mayors and council with respect and uh, with trust. And my whole mode of operation would be a team player with all of East Metro. Of course, Troutdale is dear to all of our hearts, um, but my expectation would be to sit down at the table with all the cities if there are issues that would influence uh, more than one of us, uh, that we would be not holding our own meetings and not sharing information with neighboring cities. Um, I would not plan on doing it that way. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Steiner. I agree with what's been said. We've got to work together with our partners in government. Um, anymore you can't tell where one line ends and another starts one city starts here and ends over here people that are traveling through don't know the difference we've got to work together and i think that uh, uh, once we get the council working together with the mayor the city works together with other cities we've got issues we've got transportation issues we've got police issues that that cross lines We've got East Metro Gang Task Force that works together across all the agencies. We've got the Transportation Committee that works. We've got Metro working on uh, land issues. So we've got to be a partner. We can't have our own little turf and figure this is the world that we live in because the world is long beyond that. We're, we're way beyond our own borders. And I think Troutdale has the opportunity here to be a leader in the region, not just for Troutdale, but for the region. And I think with the right mayor and the right council in place, we're on the road to uh, being that leader that I see. Thank you. Next question, Mr. Hudson, you're going to be starting to answer mm -hmm. it. And the question simply <coughs> is, what makes you different than your opponents? Mm -hmm. um, this is a bit of a difficult question to answer without being negative, and so I certainly don't intend to be. Um, the difficulty is, though, if you answer what's different uh, between opponents is that you're certainly going to put yourself in the positive light. Well, I first have to say that I don't uh, really know Mr. Slater, and um, so I can't really speak to any differences there. The only difference that I know between myself and Mr. Wilson comes from an interaction this spring when uh, I was sitting on the budget committee and uh, Mr. Wilson spoke before the budget committee. Um, and that is the, the only real clear difference that's, that's on record that I can speak to. Mr. Wilson's proposal was to uh, cut the entire city budget across all departments by 4% so that we did not run a deficit this year. And I thought that was an extremely rash proposal on his part. And I'm glad that the budget committee didn't accept it. Um, to do so would have first put the department heads in an, a, a terrible bind. Um, there are many things within a department that simply can't be but, but, but cut, uh, that either are written into a contract with employees or a contract um, with uh, repayment of a certain debt or something like that, and that would put the burden um, unfairly on other parts of the budget. But what that would do, I think irresponsibly, is let the budget committee and the city council then watch its, wash its hands of anything that went wrong once the budget was cut by 4%. If a well failed, if a, um, a police car was no longer serviceable, um, if there were something that caused a, uh, a, a disaster or an accident, um, then that needs to be the city's job to say, well, yes, I voted for that specific cut, not I said cut it and, and, and let the chips fall where they may. So that's the, the one true difference that I can speak to. Thank you. Mr. Dallas. 
Well, there are some huge differences between Jim Kite and myself. Um, first of all, I have the trust and respect of the entire city council. Uh, secondly, when I involve the city council with issues in discussion, I listen. And I listen intently uh, with the purpose of getting all of their input and listening to everybody. Um, and that's not necessarily the case with my opponent. Um, and that's the way that I plan on uh, treating the city council uh, in the future is with that same respect that uh, we all we all expect uh, there's some other differences uh, of course I've already mentioned the uh, team player approach um, my opponent tends to go off on his own and uh, the council is left behind not knowing what he's up to uh, that is just the opposite of what I will do. Uh, I will always, always involve the council with any decision-making point, any point that deserves further discussion with surrounding cities. I will always involve our neighboring cities with issues that are common. I'll stop there. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Slade. Well, I'd like to say I'm better looking than the other two, but I said that I'd be honest, so we, we won't go that route. Um, I think we all have our heart in this. We want to do the best for the city. Um, the big difference is I've got experience. I've got over 25 years of experience working in government, working with all levels from the federal, federal state, local, metro, the other cities, I've worked with all of the mayors in the other cities. I've got the experience to back me up. I'm honest, I've got the time, I will be a full-time counselor. I've got no other obligations other than a wife and a few animals at home. So I'm ready, willing, and able to work hard for the citizens of, of Troutdale and uh, spend their money wisely. Thank you. Mr. Wilson? Thank you. I didn't realize we were going to have personal attacks here. So, <laughs> um, to, to begin with, on the on the current budget, uh, the city council did ask the city to bring in a scenario of a couple of different ones. Uh, one of them being four percent. The city did say in its statement that the city cannot sustain the type of deficit spending that they are currently under for another couple of years. So all I was trying to do at that point was get that looked at. The councilors did make some cuts. They made a di and one additional cut at uh, the city council meeting. So I don't, I don't think that I wanted the entire thing, 4% cut. I wanted it looked at to see where we, we could go. And that's all I got to say on that. Uh, my experience within the city, I think uh, the city involvement is greater than my other two peers. Uh, I've been there, I've been championing the city for years, I've been down in the, uh, the weeds taking care of things, you know, working with the city and their events. Uh, the flags in Troutdale were because we got our Boy Scouts to, to put those up, you know, as, a, as something for the city to be proud of. I'm proud of this city. Uh, I've worked on a lot of different environmental issues within the city of rebuilding uh, uh, the Beaver Creek uh, area uh, with, with Eagle Scout projects. Uh, we've done split rail fencing. Uh, I've, been, I've been involved. I'm experienced and that's why the city council has sought, has elected to endorse me or support me for the position six. I've got Matt Wan's support. I've got former uh, Troutdale Mayor uh, Tolifer. I've got the uh, Troutdale Business Group behind me. Uh, I think I'm willing and ready and I'm the one to pick. Thank you. We just have uh, two more questions. Mr. Dallas, you'll uh, start with this question. It's another question from our audience. How will you work with the council to do what is best for Troutdale? Well, I think I answered that in my last answer. Um, so I don't need to expound too much further. Um, my uh, way of my leadership style is uh, one of respect of people that I work with. And uh, 
it's a team player, like I've mentioned before. I don't, I don't want to repeat myself too many times here, but I think the council that is sitting currently knows that we can work well together. They inherently know that, and I know that. And so I am really anxious to move forward in the next four years working with this city council because we, we pretty much already know that we're gonna work well together. Uh, we've had a foundation of the last few years with some of them, uh, with, with more years with others on the council. So we have a good mix of newer people, older people, not age-wise, but folks that have been around a while and those that have been on the council two years. And so that good mix of personalities and uh, differences in experience is only good. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Doust in that uh, the council right now works well together and I think there's one stumbling block and we don't need to go into that. Um, and they each bring something different to the table. They each have their own experiences, they have their own uh, thoughts, their own expertise. And I think that's important. And I think as uh, the, the mayor or as another counselor, you develop that cohesiveness of working together knowing what the other strengths are, knowing what your weaknesses are, and building upon that, getting a lot of citizen input, understanding what the citizens of Troutdale want, being able to verbalize that in meetings uh, to each other, and work together to make this the best city in East County, if not in the state of Oregon. And I think this council can do it. Could you repeat the question, please, Dave? Question is, how will you work with the council to do what is best for Troutdale? Well, I, I would be, again, a, a team player, and I, I would look to them for their guidance of uh, issues that have come up before uh, that they, they probably have a better history of, and finding out what the, what the issue continues to come back and find out the history of it. And from there, I can help formulate my opinion. But I would respect the other counselors. I wouldn't belittle the other counselors. And I know in past city councils, there's been people that yell at other city counselors. So I would uh, keep my demeanor well. I think that uh, knowing each one of the, the members of the city council, I think they're a great team. And as what's been said is that they have their own expertise and I would look forward, and I look forward to working with them in the coming year. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Thank you. I'd like to first say, I'd like to first apologize to Mr. Wilson if he felt personally attacked. There was certainly not that intent there. The, uh, the question was straightforward, what makes you different? And I felt I was being both polite and honest, and uh, I certainly did not intend to um, put anyone down. I was speaking to what I saw as a difference. As far as how I could be collaborative um, to uh, work together with the council. I think back to uh, this spring and this summer as I was helping put together the Summerfest and uh, just the wonderful camaraderie that we had on the, the Summerfest committee and how we all felt like we were putting our shoulder to the wheel to make something fantastic happen and I think that the community uh, and the city council felt the same and was very impressed with the results from Summerfest. We did this by um, by trusting each other to to um, do what we had uh, decided by respecting each other, by listening to each other um, and not trying to run the show ourselves, to soliciting input from the surrounding community as well, to making sure that everyone's uh, interests were looked after. Um, and I think that was such a successful model. That's what I would hope to bring to the city council as well. Last question. Mr. Slider, you'll start with this one. Um, if you are elected this term, have a chance to have your influence in the city over the next 10 years, paint a picture of what Troutdale would look like 10 years from now. 10 years from now, Troutdale is going to be a vibrant, alive community, both in the downtown and the outlying areas. 
We've got a lot of potential for development. We've got a lot of potential to bring in new businesses, new families, new people. Uh, let's make this a, a travel destination or a starting point for some of those things up the gorge as that have been mentioned before. I think the archway is a beginning, but we've got so much more to do, so much more to do that we can make this a destination for people that want to come and visit Troutdale and, and make, make it vibrant, make it alive. Uh, it, it's fun to go downtown Troutdale on a first Friday art walk and see the activity down there. I'd like to see that seven days a week rather than one or two uh, businesses down there uh, open in the evening. I'd like to see them open later. I'd like to see more traffic in there. Uh, we need to work on getting some parking and make it more convenient for people to come and visit us. So I see this community as being vibrant, being a, a big part of East County, regardless of what happens to the west of us, regardless of what happens to the east of us. We've got the potential and we can get her done. Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Uh, my vision would be that uh, Troutdale will become a, a, a big regional player in, in tourism and a major stop off point for people on their way to the gorge. Our city offers a lot uh, and as we grow, uh, I see the city will work, play and live in the same area. Uh, and that's, that's a, I think a goal of the city is to, to get more happening here from the city residents instead of them having to leave and come back. Uh, environmentally, I think we got one of the best environmental uh, codes around and our shores, our waterways are highly protected. Uh, with the expansion of uh, I-84 and having the bike path and the walking paths that are in development, I see more and more people coming out this way and enjoying the things that we already enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hudson. So 10 years from now, when you're visiting Troutdale, of course, in this scenario, you don't live in Troutdale. In this scenario, you are a family visiting from Seattle. So you've driven down, and this is part of a, uh, a week-long tour up the gorge, and you're spending two nights in Troutdale. And of course, it's Troutdale you've chosen because of just the, the, the unique personality of the city. Uh, you pull in where it says uh, Gateway to the Gorge, and Troutdale has really taken on that title, but instead you turn right this time because you're going up to that site uh, across from the edge field, which is now Blackberries. But 10 years from now, it's a four-star hotel. It's fantastic. It's, it, has a, um, uh, it has activities attached to the hotel, uh, including miniature golf. And after checking in there, you go downtown because there are a fantastic array of restaurants lined up next to Restaurant de Pompello, which has gained uh, international uh, standing by this time. Um, there is a beautiful public space uh, with brickwork and, and gardening where you can walk, and uh, Mayor Square is now part of this bigger complex, including a city hall, but also the things that make a uh, a city really work and function and come together. There's a grocery store, maybe it's a, a Zupans or a, or a New Seasons or a Trader Joe's that's in that same complex as the, uh, as the city hall. Uh, and on the other side, there's an Ace Hardware. Um, the, as you walk around after your evening meal, uh, everyone out else is out and walking too because in this scenario, it's July and it's not raining. Um, and so the, the weather is nice and balmy and uh, there's just this wonderful small town feel and you're looking forward to the rest of your trip out the gorge because tomorrow it's bicycles and the day after you're staying in Hood River. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Downs. Well, a lot of good ideas. I, uh, I do first of all want to say I appreciate sitting up here with these three gentlemen that want to be on the council. Uh, I'm glad I'm part of this group tonight. So my vision is kind of multifaceted, but I, it kind of centers around uh, Troutdale being a, uh, a medium to small size convention area. And this would fit nicely in the urban renewal area where we could uh, have the market or kind of a, I won't call it a niche market, but a market that's different than downtown Portland where the larger conventions are held uh, but the smaller ones could be uh, shifted out to Troutdale with a very nice restaurant on the river, 
a hotel complex, some retail shops just right down the street, um, and amenities that would bring people to Troutdale in a convention setting where we'd be known for that. And that would be, it's part of the rebranding thing that I have this vision about, but that's more, I mean, besides repeating what's already been set up here, that is more of a specific vision that I would have for Troutdale. And that would tie in nicely also with partnering with McMiniman Edgefield also as being the smaller to medium sized convention draw that this area could uniquely provide. But I do appreciate all the answers I heard from everybody up here. Thank you. Very good. We'd like to offer you uh, just a, a grand two minutes for your closing remarks. And we're gonna start with Mr. Wilson. Thank you, and, and thanks to the West Columbia Gorge for having us here tonight in East Metro for uh, bidding on it. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, we moved out here over 20 years ago. Uh, I've been involved with uh, the city of Troutdale in one aspect or another almost for all of those 20 years. In fact, uh, it's sometimes my wife said it was my second job, or er sometimes even my third. But I love the area so much. Um, I've really got involved with it. You know, I got involved with the, the city uh, committees because I thought it was important. I think it's important for all the citizens to be involved in whatever way that they can. I think the service groups, which I've been a member of also, uh, need to be involved in it, in which they are. Um, I think my experience within the city for uh, my volunteering speaks for itself, and that is the reason why the uh, city council uh, has either endorsed me or supports me for uh, position six in Troutdale City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hudson. Um, <clears throat> thank you again for having us tonight. This is uh, a wonderful forum for us to get to share more about ourselves. Uh, I, if, if you were to vote for me, you would be voting for someone who has experience. I, have, I, I currently sit on the budget committee and on the citizens advisory committee. Um, I have experience with community events such as Summerfest, but simply as a member of the community. I've um, lived in East County for years and many of them in Troutdale where I have been a high school teacher and a college teacher. Um, I've been very much a part of this community, helping students uh, work to achieve their full potential, um, raising my own kids, interacting with uh, all sorts of people from our community through the schools, both as a parent uh, and as a teacher. Um, and so if you vote for me, you'll be voting for someone, firstly, with vision, who has a, a big idea, but secondly, a plan, because I have ways to get there. I look forward to working with the uh, council and the rest of the community to make these things happen. Um, finally, um, you'll be voting for someone with integrity, someone who um, means what he says and says what he means, who is willing to extend a hand to anyone who wants to pitch in uh, and who wants to help bring Troutdale together to help it become what it can be. Thank you. Mr. Dallas. Well, thank you for this opportunity um, from the chamber. Things are lining up for uh, some change in the city, and I, and I feel like I'm right in the middle of that wave. Um, I feel that um, the city needs a good uh, leadership in the mayor's position right now, and I feel I can bring that. Um, there's some mayors in the past that I've looked at with uh, some fond respect. Uh, Sam Cox was a great mayor of Troutdale. Paul Tolliver was a great mayor of Troutdale. And all I can say is they were what we call beloved mayors and I want to be a beloved mayor of Troutdale. And I think that I can bring that to the city I am really, really looking forward to taking over in January. I cannot tell you how much I would love to be the mayor of this city because I have a lot of passion for this city and some good things that I want to bring about. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Slater. Again, thank you, Chamber, for allowing us this opportunity to address the uh, citizens of Troutdale, both uh, those in the audience and those on the uh, 
boob tube there. Um, I bring a unique perspective to the city council, or I would. Uh, I don't have any, I don't want to say ties, but I don't owe anybody anything in Troutdale. I don't uh, uh, have any, anybody that I owe that I have to say, okay, you supported me, so I've got to do this for you. I don't have that in the county. Uh, I've been a public servant almost all of my life. Um, I served in the Navy. Uh, after the Navy, I started with the uh, uh, Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. I served there. Um, I respect the people that I work for. I believe in this city. I'm passionate also about this city and the, the, the direction that we're headed. I think we've got a strong council. We've got a strong city manager. We've got some outstanding department heads that work in this city, and they're doing a fantastic job for all of us. And I appreciate that, and I want to get on board, and I want to help. I want to be there. I want to do what I can. Again, I think I've got the experience that my two uh, opponents don't have. Uh, I've dealt with multi-million dollar budgets. I was responsible for them, uh, both in, in setting them up, monitoring them, and uh, so forth. And, and again, I believe passionately about this city and the direction we're headed. Thank you very much. Thank you. In closing, I would like to also thank you for taking valuable time uh, out uh, this evening to talk to us. I'd like to thank the West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce for setting this up and all the participants in the audience and also on Metro East Community Media. And if you don't have anything else to do tomorrow night, we're going to start at 6 o'clock uh, uh, with the Fairview followed by Wood Village uh, tomorrow night here in the same place. Again, thank you to the audience and thank you candidates for being here tonight.